I had to go pick this thing up the other day. It didn't start fine and uh, boy went up to his girlfriend's house and uh, I guess he went out to start it and the thing wouldn't start as far as the not turning over. Shit, I forgot the damn keys. Keys, let's try this again. So what we got here is uh, that's it. Just a big heavy click. So, damn it. I hate a fucking barrel key. Uh, tested it last night. As far as battery goes, battery's fine. So I had bought a battery because I needed one for the other bike anyway. Because this is the battery that was in the other bike. Uh, that we bought the salvage bike. Because the battery that came with this thing is just dead as a doornail. It won't even charge. And then as soon as you put any load to it, it's like two volts. It's fried. Anyway, we swapped this battery out with the other bike, and battery's fine. It's, you know, you do a load on it, and it only goes down to, you know, you turn the lights on, and it goes from like 12.8 to 12.6, and then you hit the starter button with that little bit of click, and it goes to like 12.5. You can't ask for any better than that. So we tested it last night on a... Uh, I tested it anyway on this lead on top of the starter right there. Okay. Actually sends voltage from the solenoid to the starter motor itself. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me let me see if I can zoom in on this thing. This uh this lead on top of the solenoid right here. You see it right on top there. It goes over to the starter motor. That's what feeds voltage to the starter motor. Uh, on this side of it, which is opposite the battery side, I'm only getting like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 volts across there. Which it sounds like it wants to pull in, but it's either the contacts burnt or the pull-in coils bad one or the other you got two different coils on this thing in the solenoid you got a pull-in coil that actually slides the piston in and a holding coil that holds it in to let it start usually if the pull-in coil is bad you'll get a shotgun sound because the piston's just piston's just going in and out because it won't actually hold it in and the pull-in coil like I said that's that's what pulls the piston in to engage the starter. If that's bad, on a big twin, what we usually do, or used to do, you can get a cover right here, it's got a button on it. So, instead, because you can't rebuild the solenoids on this thing, really, you end up buying a new starter. Uh, so you put a button in there, so you can just, just like a tractor starter, you just push the button in and it makes contact. So you're, you're taking the place of the solenoid. You're just doing a mechanical solenoid. Problem is on Sportster, you can't really get to it. I mean, you can get to it, but you burn the crap out of your hands every time you try it. So uh, you're going to pull that plate off of there, off the end of the starter, and uh, see if the contacts burn or not. My meter hooked up to the top post there. I'm just going to show you what it does here. I mean, you know the relay is working because you're getting power to the starter. Uh, it wouldn't, if the relay is bad, you get a little teeny click at the relay itself. So I'm not even going to pull the lead off the bottom that goes from the relay to the starter. So we're there. Key on. It's at zero volts like it should be. Click. 
We got a little bit more today. 0.5 volts, almost 0.6. So still not enough, really. That thing should have 12 volts going right through it to the starter. At least 12 or 13. So we're getting basically a, probably a 12 volt voltage drop through the solenoid. Now, uh, if I have to, I'll uh, I'll do a test on uh, pull-in coils and hold-in coils later if I get the cap off there and the uh, valve's not burnt or not valved. Uh, contacts not burnt on the solenoid piston. So let's let's get this thing apart and see what's going on. See what I got here. I got the piston out. That's what the piston looks like. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. It's got some burn marks in it, but not not as much as I thought it would be. You know, it's pulling in like it should. It just ain't making contact. So what I'm going to do is, let me, let me see if I can show you this. I'm going to pull this contact off the top here because that's the one that looks like it's burnt the most. That's the one that goes to the starter there. I'll pull it out and show you in a minute and probably polish both those up. The other one, other contacts down here at the bottom. Uh, right down, right down here somewhere. Down at the bottom there. And we'll clean that one off in the top one. And we'll rip this thing out of here. I do that, I'm going to disconnect the battery over here. And uh, so I don't spark nothing and burn nothing up. Just disconnect the negative here. Just a little shop story here. I went to a service school one time and there was a guy and a girl there that were married and uh, the guy had a, where his ring finger is, had a big perfectly, perfect uh, burn mark all the way around his finger from uh, wearing his wedding, wedding ring while he's working. And he arced it up against something, and they had to cut the skin off around the ring and then split the ring in two, cut it in portions to get it off his finger because the skin just melted around the damn ring, or the ring melted into his finger. And that was just an accident, you know, arced up against the positive wire, and the ring touched uh, touching the ground, and it that quick. Just then his wife, girlfriend, wife goes, uh, yeah, that's a permanent, permanent wedding ring right there. He can never take it off. And uh, so just be careful when you're messing around. You know, try not to wear jewelry while you're working on stuff. Not just that, you can cut, catch it on something. And I've seen, seen guys that are missing fingers because the ring got caught on something and they pretty much fell and it just kind of ripped their finger off. You know, or whatever, who knows. So just be careful. And not just that, you don't want to damage anything on the bike by arcing the ground. So let me pull this off here. I'll just show you a resistance test across the, across the solenoid here. I got the battery out. Everything's disconnected. I'm just going in between the, uh, just manually putting a uh, piston in there and pushing it to see what kind of resistance I'm getting. It's not really making contact with it. It should, it should be zero or really close to zero. I just went up one scale and on a 20,000 ohm scale. We're at basically 2,500 ohms of resistance across the uh, solenoid contacts. That should, like I said, that should be zero. So we got an alignment problem, contact problem, some, something ain't right. 
like I said, somebody that looked like looked like somebody had been in here and replaced the contacts on it. I just had this one out and looked at it. It looked it looked new. Uh, this one down here looks fairly new on the bottom. Uh, even the contacts on the, this big copper washer, it definitely ain't burnt. But it ain't making no contact. You know, 2,500 ohms of resistance. Like I said, that should be zero. At least for now, where we're at right now. Pull in coils working. Hold in coil seems to be working. It just ain't making contact across the surfaces there. So I'm going to take a little break. There where the contacts are, if they're misaligned, like if this one's a little bit lower than the other one, I mean just a hair. And what I can do is loosen this up and kind of push it in there. Uh, loosen the other one up and kind of hold it in and tighten them. Make sure I'm getting good contact across the faces there. And in the contacts where they screw into the starter there. Move them around a little bit and hold them up. Hold the piston in while I checked it. So I went from 2,500 Ohm's resistance to what I got now. Three, two, two point five ohms resistance. I can live with that. That's a hell of a lot better than twenty five hundred. If I can get it to zero, Let's see if this thing will turn over. I had to move this one here a little, loosen that one. And really the one that was way off was this bottom one here where the battery cable goes in there. Loosen that one up and it went from 2500 to 800. Just by loosening it. And holding the piston in there. To kind of align them up while I'm tightening them. So, cleaning the line, the contacts on this thing. Uh, like I said, got it down to where I was measuring like 2.5 ohms instead of 2500. So, now I ain't got the pipes on there, so I already started, but. I think that, the barrel keys, I think that works good now. I'll put it, rest the way back together and uh, take it out and ride here in a little bit. All right, let's check this thing out. I think that'll work. Should have got a damn blade key instead of the fucking barrel key. I hate them things, man. Every time I turn it off, the damn key falls out. It's the worst damn design for a key ever. Uh, a couple of things I didn't go over in the video that I need to reiterate. When you when you do them contacts on the starter there, you know, it's a piece of copper going through a piece of metal, and there's two insulators in there. Uh, there should be. There's an insulator that goes up through the case that the stud for the contacts goes through. Uh, and then there's a little plastic piece that goes in the center that kind of centers it down uh, at the top. Centers it in between the part of the case and the uh, top piece of plastic that goes over it and then there's a Bakelite washer on top of that and then the nut. So when you're tightening them studs down, 
don't over tighten them. You want them tight, of course, but you, you crack that insulator, you just, you know, then you got to go buy a new kit. Those things make any contact with the case at all. Uh, you, you, you just you just wasted your time. Uh, so be careful when you're doing those. Make sure the insulators are good. Like I said, it, it, it needs to be tight, but it don't need to be, you know, you, you don't need to crank on it. I know there's probably a torque on it, but I, I, I have no idea what it is. And I've never torqued one. I've always t just tightened them. And uh, that's been sufficient. I guess when I first started out uh, a really long time ago, I did a, I think I did a starter or something like that, and I cracked it. And uh, ended up having to get another fish out for another insulator to put in there. Actually, I think you can still buy them then, just the insulator itself. Most, most stores had them, or at least Napa did. Had a selection of all that stuff, and some of them probably still do. Maybe. I don't know. So just be careful with that. Uh, so, wasn't the starter itself. Boy kept saying, shit, now I need a starter. That's going to be $300. So, well, maybe, maybe not. Like I said, somebody's been in there and put new contacts in there. Everything looked brand new. The contacts had no pock marks on them. They looked brand new, like they ain't never been used. Ain't even never, barely made contact with anything. Uh, all I did was loosen them up and uh, kind of hold them in position with the piston pushed down and then tighten them back up. And as soon as I did that, the resistance went from 2,500 to 2.5, which is which is great. You, know, you ain't you ain't feeding no kind of ultra at all through 2,500 ohms of resistance. And just remember, too, that as resistance goes up, heat goes up. So if you're trying to throw voltage through a, through an arc, it's, you're creating a lot of heat. And that'll fry a damn starter in a heartbeat. Too much heat. No, anyway, that's it for this one. It's almost my nap time. Nappy nap. Uh, that's one and done. If you like my content, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that jazz, and hit the notification bell, and have a great day. I think it's getting ready to pour rain here for the next couple of days. So, yeah, j j of course it is. Just fix the bike, and now it's going to start raining. And, you know, I don't care if I'm riding. I, I ride in the rig for a long time, but, you know, boys brand new to riding riding street bike anyway and you don't need to be tearing up the roads in the damn rain yet but uh guys take care